Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this is a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. I find Ariana Brock and Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Or this one, we're going to go back to us, y'all. It's been so long. We missed y'all. We just going to do Niamh and Miami. Hey. Niggas who've been gone for two weeks, <laughs> coming back for one week, then going for another week away. But then, like, I promised you niggas, we'll be back December wrong. Don't worry. We back to the regular schedule program, three podcasts a week, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Niram, you happy to be back? I'm happy to be back, it's, y'all. It won um, Nyambi and Mabel. <laughs> Nyambi and Mabel was here. <laughs> Who weren't here? Niram's. Who was you? I'm Niram's. And I'm Nyambi. And this is episode 291, y'all. Hey, happy Monday. It's been two weeks. Last time we talked to y'all, it was um Halloween. I know. Hocus is Pocus is was playing. Hocus is Pocus. <laughs> and before that, we was in Detroit. Yeah. Damn, we've been some traveling ass niggas. Actually, you. you Me too? and Mabel been localized. Localized? <laughs> yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, we have. No. Your ass been out the country, too. Oh, okay. Tip for tat. Oh, okay. But you know what? God is good. Hey, all the time. Uh, and all the time. He good. Did y'all get that moment for Nero? I said, God. Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rating review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher and follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters. It's black with no K. Did we even talk about Detroit? No, because. (laughs) 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 I can't even remember. I think we did talk about it because we talked about the marathon. The shit's just flying together. Oh my God, so much is going on. Before I jump in, y'all, honestly, Loki, High Key, Nayambi has zero updates. Mm. The only thing Nayambi's has done, she's t- I've taken three two weeks to clean a closet. So I've been gone all this long. You ain't lived no life to give no. these kind people no, no. update. No, I've been working. It's Q4. What's P. Diddy's song? Don't bother me, I'm working. Clap, 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 clap. Yes. Don't it's, bother me, I'm working. It is Q4. In corporate America and or retail, everybody is heads down. Mm. We heads down. You get a little break to eat a piece of turkey, bring your monkey ass back. Then you push for about two weeks. Then we all collapse. Mm -hmm. Then we come back to a slow Q1 and see we cut our losses. (laughs) Everybody know what it is? Ain't that what it is? Mm -hmm. So I don't got much besides that. Thank you, Jesus. Ashley, you know, I be praying for that sometimes. You know, sometimes you ever been through the storm and you be like, Lord, just give me a normal day. Or you reflect, <laughs> when you in the storm, you reflect on no boring ass day that you be like, dang, I'm bored. You be like, Lord, don't buke me. I ain't never going to say I'm bored again. <laughs> don't buke me. Don't buke. You know, buke, scorn. Shout out to Vicky White as long as I got King Jesus. You know, about as long as I got King Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. How do you? Do you know the song? Long as I got King Jesus. Yeah. I don't need nobody else. Yeah. Long as I got King Jesus. Long as oh, she Nick, got Nerev King Jesus. Oh, is on the Usher board now. Are don't you on need the, nobody else. And then she like, you been lied on, lied on, talked about some, something. Some cheated on. Going, you been buked, scorned, yeah. talked oh. about. So that's where I get buked from. Oh, I where else do you say buked in a normal? I don't even know if that's really what we're saying. But that's how I how interpret it. How you spell buked? B-U-T. B- E-D. Oh. E-D. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Book a K the in there. Oh, oh like Shit. rebuke. I just said buke. <laughs> what is she saying? Pull it up. I don't want people clowning me. Because I do love that song. <laughs> and Vicky Wine is, is another Detroit legend. Like Vicky Wine, the Wyans family is up there with the Clark um, family too. So the Wyans, Vicky Wine is, is absolutely a living legend. So I do not want to um half step the song i'm talking about you look into the lyrics as long as i got king jesus what is it there no this ain't that, that ain't key you gotta put in vicky Winans. you know how many king jesus you know how many songs about jesus this is mm. you'll be talking about king jesus hey then a the white man oh come out. as long as i got king he, jesus. it's literally called that near <laughs> i don't need it's not even as long. It's long. As long as. Oh, you said it's not as long? <laughs> yeah. Because it's, it's supposed to be um like Negro spiritual mm-hmm. and influence. So as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. What did, what do it go? Where it's like, I be lied, scorned. Where it's it? right there. I've been lied. Okay. Cheated. Talked, talked about, about. Mistreated. I've been used. used. Oh, it's used. <laughs> <laughs> Scorn. <laughs> talked I about. It was used. Sore as a bone. What? I've been up, right? I've been down. <laughs> almost to the ground. But wait. And she's like, long, 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 long. Oh, that bop. We ain't going to listen to it today, though, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's used? Yes, it ain't butte. <laughs> <laughs> Mis- misunderstood gospel. Oh lip my lyrics. god. Butte. <laughs> you over here talking about you've been butte. It's I've been used. It's been used. Did you just go to what is this, Lyric Genius? Yes. Don't do that to me. <laughs> you know what? Could we do a Lyric Genius with all, like, the gospel? I mean, I guess all the, the thesis is I love Jesus. Mm. But, but, <laughs> but where were you in the moment where you were thinking about this? Can we talk about? No, we'll do this Wednesday. I actually been falling back in love with gospel music. It's been a, I guess y'all was like, did you ever fall out of love with it, Nyambi? <laughs> yes, because there was a moment, Nero could say, it was probably, what, about six months straight, I listened to nothing but gospel music. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Yes. Nothing but gospel music was, I listened to nothing but gospel music, nothing but like devotionals, testimonies, so like six months straight. And I fell back off that a little bit. But I will say, since you've been gone near them, I have fell back in love um, with a little bit more music. Maybe I'll give y'all some updates on what I'm listening to. Oldies and some new ones too. Oh, okay. You listen to some uh, trap gospel? I don't. Oh. I, I don't. Did I give you a reason why I don't listen to trap gospel? Nope. Did I show you? I was like, this is why I don't do this. Nope. Well, who was I with? And it was like, it was just like gospel gone wrong. <laughs> and I was just like, see, this is why you don't combine them. Well, Nero, you had to be here. I can't remember. I can't remember either. Ever come back to me. Well, we got to put respect. Um, Before I forget, you know, mm-hmm. I just want to just take a moment mm-hmm. and put respect on the name. Hit it, Nero. We lost John Wiggerspoon. I think we actually lost him the last day we did the podcast. Mm-hmm. That next one. Let's take a look. Um, we just want to put some respect on this name. You can put that back down here. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll pull it on down. Can't pay Smokey. Can't, can't pay him. Pay. You know, Smokey might be looking to get paid. We, we can't pay him. We can't pay Smokey. Shout out to John Wiggerspoon. A legend in this comedy game. A legend, right? Mm-hmm. Who? When he everybody pops. He was. From the Wayans Brothers to Friday yeah. to the Hollywood Shuffle. How long has he been doing this? Hoes need pies too. What? Hoe cakes. <laughs> Hoe cakes. <laughs> he, yes. And when I heard it, and I, again, I know he's getting older and he, you know, he's getting up there and everything. But for some reason, I was just like, dang, come on now. Not John. It was too much, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, as we prepare for the fume, um, what you bringing, Nerms? I think I'm gonna bring biscuits and gravy. Oh my goodness! Oh, well, you know I'm gonna bring. What you gonna you bring? You remember that scene on Friday? Which I'm one? bringing hog moths and pig feet. <laughs> Can we talk about food and John Witherspoon though? <laughs> and the scenes in which look, I, honestly, I'm gonna say almost all his scenes he be eating food in it. He be eating food like. He make it sound so good that my mouth begins to water. The way I like to say it, it was even in Friday. He could eat a grape and he can find the bone in that motherfucker. Like, it is so, like, how you eating it? I mean, sometimes I tell that to Nero. Nero be eating baked chicken and start crunching. I'm like, where the bone come from? (laughs) Oh, hey, nasty. Well, the skin ain't crunchy. It's baked chicken. I think John Witherspoon's that too, but I know mm-hmm. one of my favorite scenes is the one that he was in front. Nearum, you got that scene? Yeah, I got it. You got to play that. See if you can find it. Every time I come in the kitchen, oh. you in the kitchen. That's a great. That loud. In the goddamn refrigerator, <laughs> eating up all the food. This Friday. All the chicken, all the pig feet. <laughs> Ate my dinner, my mashed potatoes, <laughs> that good old gravy I like, and biscuits I can sop that gravy in. <laughs> Ate all it up. You drink up all the milk. Uh, don't care milk. what kind of milk it is. You, you don't care. Two percent, three percent buttermilk, patent milk. Hold a cow in a patent milk can. I bet you eat that too. What's wrong with you? I'm ha- Hold on. Hey, he said you eat the cow in the pet milk. <laughs> the polo pot cow on the on the um, on the pet milk. Can we talk about why you always? First of all, how many folks have had their parents or some uh, um, elder figure tell you whenever you're in the fridge? Why are you always in the goddamn fridge? Close the fridge. Call, yeah. Why, Why are you yeah. always looking in the refrigerator? Letting out all that the cold air. The frigid air. If you go, shout out to my grandfather. Why are you always in the frigid air? Close it. You know what's in there. <laughs> my grandma was so shady. He was like, should I take a picture of what's in the fridge and put it on the outside? Since you like looking at it so much? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Why did we grow up? <laughs> Why did we look at it? You know what though? Y'all know who look in the fridge all the time? <laughs> Nero. <laughs> to the point where I'm like, are you hungry? Like, do you want me to make you something? 
blood sugar's low. Near, I'm not one to go in the fridge. If I'm going in the fridge, I'm absolutely going there for a mission. I don't ever just go in there and look at it. Like, I never go in the fridge and be like, no, I ain't hungry. If I'm going to the refrigerator, I am hungry. I am getting some water, some some cheese. I'm getting something. Mm-hmm. Can you tell to uh, talk to us, Niram, about your infatuation with I opening like the fridge? The food, and then Niram would just look at it. Like, he'll open there and, like, lean his hand on top of the, um, like, against the door and, like, look at it like it's a TV show. I just like, like looking at the in food there? in the fridge. Our fridge is not that big. I'm just saying, I grew up so many times and opened that fridge. There wasn't no food there. Nah, I don't believe your mom ain't feed you. <laughs> that sometimes. Listen, listen, you're a king size snack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many meals you was missing. <laughs> Try again. Because start was, another violin up. I was eating. I was processed. eating that, uh, that unhealthy processed food. Oh, okay. I was eating those banquets, TV dinners. Oh my goodness. You know all them. Si- yeah, with all them sodiums and salts oh, and shit. Oh my goodness, and that rain. Fucked you up. So you just retaining water mm-hmm. all these years? All these years. Oh, okay. Saw the level ain't never went back down. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. How we want to world with that? But shout out to John Witherspoon. I just, you know, wanted to make sure I take time because legends, as y'all, I keep telling y'all, y'all got to give folks their flowers while they're still alive. Not even just celebrities. If you got older folks, if you got, if you lucky enough to have your grandparents, your parents, your aunts, your uncles, great aunts and uncles, just go love up on them or just listen to some stories they got to tell you. Honey, I always tell you, if you want to know the truth, the truth, truth, reach out to some children under the age of eight or you go talk to somebody over 75. They don't have nothing to lose. <laughs> them the two ones ain't go. Them the two people I don't want on no jury. I'm doing. <laughs> you bring some an old thirty five year pro. They'll put your ass in jail in a minute. Anyway, what else is going on with me? Uh, we watched a movie this weekend that was bomb and should be out everywhere. Mm. It's called Loose. Yep, it's called Loose. L U C E. We rented it from Amazon Prime, and it has Octavia Spencer and some other white people. Y'all would recognize. Um, it's the white man who was in Lie to Me, the lead character. Mm. And there's another woman who played in Hereditary. Oh. Who's the lead woman who played in Hereditary who was scared? I forgot her name. I want to say Flip. This is the one, United States of Terra. Ooh, shout out. Am I too old? You yeah. know the United States of Terra on Showtime? Nope. Don't know that either. Oh, you You're talking all these shows. I don't know. Anywho, Octavia Butler in it. Y'all niggas know, know her, her. Yeah. with a shit pie. Yeah. <laughs> it is so good, y'all. Like the levels to this is like a psychological thriller without like a conclusive ending. <laughs> Like, it's a psychological thriller, thriller where I want loose part two because I know this is not the beginning of this nigga on fuck shit. All I have to say, the theme of the movie is believe black women. <laughs> <laughs> we watched the preview because that's what I do sometimes when I'm in bed late at night um, and I don't need to have time to watch a whole show, but I, I need like 10, 15 minutes before I go to sleep. I'll just go through and watch a bunch of previews of things I'm going to watch. And this came up Saturday night. And I was like, Niran, we're watching this on Sunday. And I don't want to give too much away for y'all, but it's basically Octavia, Octavia Butler is a teacher. And it's these white parents who adopt this black child from some war-torn country. I don't know. They didn't even say where. Um, and they talk about him. They like fast forward. Wherever this war-torn country, this nigga, this young black guy, <laughs> this black guy come from, is bad. Like, we're not just talking about poverty. We're talking about like, apartheid, rape, pillage, kill, like intense shit, right? So he had to go through years of therapy, all this type of stuff. But now his nigga's a black unicorn. Valid Victorian, like just doing all this good shit. Right, right, right. But then shit start popping off. Bow, bow, bow. And you know what I'm talking about when shit popping off. <laughs> Cause I say believe black woman. Cause you know, and honestly, oh my goodness, how much time we got now? <laughs> this is something because black women, we be knowing what Amanda Seals tells us. We be knowing because y'all ever just been around a Negro or a Negro adjacent person and they like in the whites, the colonizers love them. But you be like, it's something ain't right with this nigga. And it ain't even hating mm-hmm. on like their work or like, cause the thing is they deliver. But it's some sunken place shit about. It's like very sunken place about this nigga. And you can't put your feet on it. And that's what's going on here. And you don't know who the bad guy, who the good guy. And of course, in America, who are you blaming on? The black woman. Y'all watch it. I hope I ain't give too much away. But again, my thing from that movie is believe black women. Because niggas be on shit. <laughs> What you think about the movie, Nero? It was crazy. It's mind. called Loose. L U C E. Go pay the five dollars rent that shit, then email us. <laughs> what you thought? 
thought, though, Daryl. It was a crazy ass movie. Mm-hmm. Did it, you want to choke loose? It was a psychological thriller. We talking about full frontal, full black frontal. And there was points in times where I would choke everybody. Everybody. Yes. Loose. Everybody. Nah. It's only one nigga I wanted. <laughs> Octavia Spencer, the mama, the daddy, and Loose. The d- it was it was times you was rooting for all the people. Mm-hmm. Because also we got to talking about taking the nigga piece in the white family. You know that always. You know. Uh, yeah, we gonna leave that there. But taking that piece out of it, like the white people, white savior adopting black people, and da 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 da, taking that out of it. Can we? I just wanted to unpack how y'all parents ride or die for your kids, even if they're sociopaths. Meanwhile, Naomi can't even ride or die for Mabel. <laughs> Listen, I ride or die for Mabel, but I don't believe in lying for no reason. Mm-hmm. If you know, if you know, if I have a child and I know they're crazy, ain't no need me for me riding down that. That's crazy. I gotta take I gotta take you to get help. I hope my conversation lead on like how do you get to that point as a parent? When you be like, when it's destructive. We're not talking about, I don't know, what's something more, a little bit more harmless. I don't know, getting the first pick at something. Like, we're talking about, or maybe maybe I'm saying this wrong. I don't, I, take that back. I can see parents being ride or die for their kids. I can see parents lying on their kids and things of that nature. But what I can't see is like how parents refuse to acknowledge that their kid can be anything less than perfect. That's what it is. Like, I get it. You know what? Take, uh-huh. I get it. I get it. If you got to lie for your kids, you got to lie, cheat, steal, kill, you would do it. But there there was never that moment that they came back in that house and was like, listen here, nigga. Because you don't bring it up. Shit. <laughs> what? Oh, now y'all be bringing it up. I said, nigga, you see what I did in there? <laughs> don't you ever make me do it again. Oh, I hold it over his head like a drug dealer. Oh. You owe me. You in debt. What's that called with a drug dealer? Like you, you owe me a favor. That's it, favor for a favor. You owe me a, uh, but pres- like it, we on like, that, you on that President Trump. What is it? Quid pro quo. Quid pro quo. But like it, it was never acknowledged between the parents and the child. They're like, what the fuck was that, right? Or what is? How was y'all parenting when shit pop off? Or is that not the appropriate parent? Like something happened. And the mom was like, oh, my God, the teacher brought this up. This happened. What do I do? And they seen the son come in. She hurrying up and hiding and shit. What happened to the days where if your parent found out some dirt you did, I felt like my parents be waiting on the street. <laughs> They'd be on the sidewalk. <laughs> and, like, they would be like, they wouldn't even say good morning, good afternoon. They'd be like, what the fuck is this? Because <laughs> you got to take me off guard. Mm-hmm. Like, where, where's, why is that coming into play where the parents didn't even feel like, they had the authority to be like, what the fuck? Like, is that inappropriate to tell your kid? Like, you cannot just tell your kid, like, this is some bullshit. What the fuck is going on? That's too raw. No, it ain't raw. What you? Well, I mean, you know, I ain't for hitting kids. But I am for a yoke up. You are for hitting kids. I am not for hitting kids. I don't believe in abuse. <laughs> but I do believe. Y'all know what a yoke up is? <laughs> you know when you yoke in the collar? So you got to get them by the collar. You got to get them against a flat surface against the wall. And I want my breath. I want my breath to stink, actually. And I want to be so close to their face that my spit is like popping off their nose. Not the spittle. (laughs) Going on their nose. And then when I'm done cussing them out, I want to throw them against the wall. (laughs) And walk away. (laughs) Is that? That's not good. That's a fuse, baby. That's not abuse. Throwing somebody against the wall. I didn't say throw them against the wall. And, I want them to be adjacent to the wall. And, and like, I want to be real close with them. Like, I'm going to give them a hug. And then when I'm done talking, I want to just... A, you throw them against the wall. That's not throwing. <laughs> that's that's so you nudging. Spit, you're spitting in their face. I'm not spitting on their face. And you're I'm throwing talking. them against the wall. I'm talking. Mm. Well, how would you do it now? Uh-oh. Yo cannot allow... You know, as I get older, ass weapons, yeah, you got to be careful with that. After a certain age, that's not effective. But a good yoking... Because it's something about these niggas... You can't, you can't talk to people like they, I don't know. It's just, you gonna catch the wrong one on the street. A good old fashioned throat punch. (laughs) (laughs) No, we ain't throat punching. I believe in yoke. 
I don't blink a lose that. I don't believe in a throat punch. <laughs> Can the parents of older? I'm not talking about kids either. So like, I do think there's a certain level of different discipline you have to give younger kids. Whooping, that's something else. I'm talking about the parents with the big niggas. So I'm talking about the people parents who got who who's raising 13 and up. <laughs> How do you discipline them niggas? Just turn off the Wi-Fi. <laughs> That don't help no more because they nope. connect to the McDonald's Wi-Fi. Yep. Or they did. Hell, tech. Like, Google just get free internet. Like, what do you They be doing? like, well, I can't do my homework because you turned off the Wi-Fi. You want to kill them. <laughs> so I, I can't do no can, homework. Can folks with 13 and up thick-ass kids. I'm not talking about kids who are fragile. Like, thick-ass kids. Um, yeah, I know what I mean by the more fragile kids. You can kind of just raise your voice like Mabel and they just kind of get scared. Like, how do you discipline them? Throat punch. No, we ain't throat punching. Oh. Um, but anyway, y'all watch Loose. Y'all, have y'all seen that? I'm, I'm obsessed with this. I seen it on the news because I'm in California. Funky Dineva did a YouTube that is brilliant. And I just feel like every time I go on my browser, it's there. Did y'all hear about the homeless person in LA who threw a bucket of diarrhea on somebody? What? Oh my God. Near him. When I heard the story, I was traumatized for three days. And ain't nothing get on me. <laughs> Funky Dineva does a much better job explaining this than I do. So, y'all, if y'all want to know the whole story, go check out Funky Dineva on YouTube and just type in di- diarrhea and Funky Dineva. What happened, I think it was in downtown Hollywood on, like, the Walk of Fame. And a woman was, like, getting in her car or something. And then a homeless person, person grabbed a bucket and threw the bucket at her. And it landed all on her face in her car. And the way that they just described it. They said it was hot and it was like dripping off her eyelash. <laughs> My nigga. Only two responses. Die or kill them. Because what? Why? W- and me and Funky Dineva had the same question. How they keep the poo boo hot? <laughs> it's LA. It's already hot. So it was just simmering in the sun. Yes. Then after they simmered in oh my God. They simmered in the sun. Then they threw it. And the woman told me she got PTSD. I bet the fuck you do. <laughs> and then, you know, this series, I ain't trying to make no light. She got to get tested every three months for, like, different diseases. Uh, this ain't no. I told my mama this story. It was she coming was, off her eyelash into her eye. That ain't funny. And my mom was like, I wish you. I'd rather have dog shit than that. Because she's human. Pick all that to being said, everybody is on a journey. You better watch. Stay on your square and keep your head on a fucking swivel. You hear me? Mm-hmm. Hot shit. Mm-mm. Hot shit. shit. We going down, 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 baby. Yep. And through y'all Google the story. Homeless person in LA throws a bucket of hot diarrhea. Oh my god. Shimmy, could, shimmy. Do you think puffs? she ever could stop smelling it? No. I would be fucked up. Oh shit. Would you run? They say uh homeless attacks are on a rise in LA. So homeless people just walking around fucking you up. I mean, but honestly, if we want to get real about this homeless application, I'm, oh shit. shit! I'm sorry, we watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, we watching these videos. I don't think it's just homeless people. I think it's folks who have some mental, you know, uh-huh. difficulties that happen to be homeless. Mm-hmm. That's what I think is going on there with these attacks and this diarrhea. But th- the thing is, it's such a high volume of folks who are homeless in certain areas, right? Due to weather, climate, accessibility, that some got to give. We need to re- really look at this mm-hmm. in some cities in America to say what we going to do and how we going to navigate through this because they can't be throwing shit on folk. They can't be whoop- molly whopping people upside the head. But also on the other side, right, we talking about the homeless people. There was a time and a period, I'm sure it still goes on now, with little stupid-ass kids we're just going to whoop up on homeless people asses, too. Oh, bomb bashing. Yeah, so I'm not about to sit here and be like, whoa, it's me. Like, the homeless people don't got nothing to get mad about, huh? Like, they ain't doing a revolution. But some got to come to hell. When I heard that, I was done. You want a little, that didn't disturb you yeah, in your spirit. A little bit. And imagine when we be out. Oh, my God. Nah, I would if your mouth gagging. was open, <laughs> I would probably pass out. <laughs> What would you do? Fight the nigga. So, yeah, you either fight Kill or him. I keep saying you either fight or die. <laughs> like you either like just you will be going to jail because you would just start fighting and beating their ass nonstop, or you would just faint like a goat. You know them goats. You're fainting goats. <laughs> you would just hit it and go from there. But that's the story that stood out to me too. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see what other stuff I'm talking about. 
Um, y'all catching up on that love and hip hop Alabama? <laughs> Shout out to Love and Marriage Huntsville. They stay good. Melody and um, Martell. Are y'all getting a divorce and all? Because it sounds like they don't want to, but it seems like somebody don't want to say sorry and forgive. Ain't nobody talking about how this baby was made. <laughs> you know how the baby was made. If he was always somebody in the bed. If he was always upstairs, he wasn't always upstairs. And she in the was always house. downstairs. And he was always down at the Discovery Bar. <laughs> How this baby was <laughs> made. <laughs> Melody, so many Martell, questions. figure it out. Either forgive each other or move on. But this going back and forth is ridiculous. Shout out to Melody. Melody left them kids with him, though, honey. <laughs> <laughs> she showed it. Melody had an attitude, that. too. He tested. He said, Can you watch your kids hurt? I'm booked. <laughs> Um, my next least favorite couple. Can we talk about uh Marcel and is it Tisha? Tisha. Tisha. Why did Tisha go see that speech coach on the internet on the television? And why she had to have a white woman tell her that speech don't um um align with intelligence? Oh, I'm like, I don't know about all that, but I think there's something there. But <laughs> but I like sis, you got an accent. What are you talking about? Did, wh- whoever thought Tisha was stupid? No one thought she was stupid. She just talked slow as hell, not, slow as hell, and I lose interest. <laughs> she do. But I ain't never doubt her intelligence. Like, where she pulled that from? Mm. I know, Marcel. <laughs> Woo! I am. You on fire, baby? What do you mean I'm on <laughs> fire? <laughs> but I'm like, Tish, ain't nobody else challenging your intelligence except your husband. And can we talk about? I stand for Mama Tish's mama who stays in Marcel's ass. Ma, Tish mama asks Marcel on a daily basis if he's fucking bitches. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do there when my mom asks you that daily? <laughs> what would you do? Living in his house daily. He be like, I'm running late for dinner. He be like, she be like, is you with yeah, your bitches? You were fucking with other bitches. <laughs> so I just stand for her on that. Um, after that, Kimmy and the other man. I always forget his name because he's kind of underwhelming. Maurice. Oh, all these M names. That's his name. Mm-hmm. I really like Kimmy. She's one of my favorite characters. But Kimmy, I have feedback for you. You're not going to compete with his baby mama. And if you try to compete, you're going to lose this. <laughs> um, this is shit you should have hashed out before you got married. What the, What's his name? Muffet. What's, what's, his, what? what's his son's name? Muffet. Monster. <laughs> what a- why they name that boy that? That's stupid, isn't it? You feel like you're manifesting something you don't need to you're manifest. You're beast, monster. He's not even. Okay. You're not going to win when it comes to the monster Kawa versus Kimmy. You know who's always going to win that? Detroit. <laughs> monster, Muppet, and Kawa. And you know why Kawa's going to win because that's Monster's mom. And Maurice wants Monster. So, sis, I'm not sure if this is the right battle to fight. And also, you can really hold your breath if you think Kit Kawa, a black girl from Detroit, is going to apologize to your country ass. Nope. She probably finds joy in not apologizing. Honestly, let me take that back. I don't think a Kawa, or whatever her name is, Detroit baby mama, is as interested as Maurice as Kimmy is making it out to be. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think baby mama's just like, I've been taking care of this child for this long. I've been doing all this work. I'm not doing shit that's of inconvenience to me. Right. <laughs> so kick rocks. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Because Kimmy don't know history between Maurice and Detroit baby mama. You know, because he just went through this black unicorn transformation, losing weight, getting money. He might have been a real fuck nigga. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know him. Pre, pre pre what's this people what's that club called comeback group the comeback group we don't know when he was off seven mile <laughs> you got the comeback crew that's finding dan you got the comeback crew he done got jenny craig he done lost that weight he done got good got clear the skin up you won't win him when he was a big nigga out here wearing bombers and yays so, Kimmy, Help me, Lord. just choose wisely or be smart and befriend baby mama. That's your choice. But, sis, if you bring your grown ass on here crying one more time 
about a battle you're not going to win or something you should have had a conversation with about him before you got motherfucking married. Ain't nobody feel sorry, girl. And you got children. Where's your baby daddy? What you do? Well, her kid's grown. Yeah. But what she do if her baby daddy's talking about, I'm going to take my child to go live in, I don't know. What's another country? Houston? I don't know. Tennessee. Tennessee. Could got to be born like Huntsville. So that's interesting. Let me speed up. Niram give me get Niram tell me to wrap it up, y'all. Disney Plus is okay. I don't look at cartoons that much. I don't know how many times I can keep watching The Lion King. But you know what was good? The Lady and the Tramp was it. Me and Mabel watched that as Mother Daughter and Bond in time. I don't I don't think I'm here for Disney Plus. What about you, Niram? Nope. I mean, some of the throwback things like Gargoyles, Bonkers, Duck Ring, Darkwing Duck, they was Darkwing good. Darkwing Duck. But low key, I don't even think I can sit through a whole episode. I just like the theme songs. Mm -hmm. They bop. You like Disney Plus? Um, it's all right. The thing is, I you really, really, really wasn't like a big Disney Disney fan to begin with. Yeah. So, and the thing is, it ain't like it's new material. It's like oh yeah. shit. But if you got children. Or if you're super into Disney, Star Wars, and stuff like that, it'd be really good. Right. But nah. Um, other than that, just getting ready, y'all. We got an episode this Tuesday, this Monday and Wednesday. But this Friday, honey, we're going to be in Jamaica. Jamaica. We're going to be in Jamaica for mm. a whole seven days. So, yeah, we're going to have a week of th that Friday, week of Thanksgiving off. But then after that, we're going to come back strong. And I'm just physically, mentally, and emotionally getting ready for it. I done bought some new bathing suits because I have bathing suits, but they tight. And I don't got time for a tight bathing suit in the sun. So I bought me some cute bathing suits. I'm just ready to go. I'm ready for this break. What about you, Nerums? I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited for this trip. Oh, my goodness. Well, Nerums told me I talk too much. Nerums, what's your check-in? Tell folks what's been going on. Y'all boy has been traveling, you know, I'm internationally known, and when oh, I'm known, I'm microphone. microphone. Jesus. I am jet lagged in the mug. Nira, so I feel like every time you come on this mic, you're talking about you jet lagged. I am. I've been jet lagged since Berlin. Oh, my God. I hey, Y'all tell him, don't nobody feel sorry for him. <laughs> Nigga is jet lagged. So, my trip started off, um, well, interesting enough, I ain't been home since uh, Halloween. Yeah. So, my trip started off with New York City Marathon. Mm -hmm. Left for that, uh, well, I leave Friday. Left Friday, yeah. got there Saturday. How was that? Um, New York was fun. It was always fun. Especially, it was always fun when I uh, get to spend some time with my friends. Yeah. So, I spent some time with them. Um, she actually had some uh, a video shoot going on, so that was pretty cool. Mm. Um, and just doing that and just following her around. You know, I was just chilling, not being one of those uh, assistant friends. Oh, you eat any good food in New York? Um, yeah, I did. I went to this place called Peaches in Brooklyn. Ooh, it sound good. It was good, very good. Soul food. Yep, soul food. Mm -hmm. And then I peach had. Peach cobbler. Mm, I don't remember if I had peach cobbler. Well, it can't be called peaches and I had no peach cobbler. And then we went to a top place called Zoob Zib. I think. Mm -hmm. It was just called. I don't think that's. Um, it. I think that's what it's called, Zoop Zip. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the next day we ran the, ran the race. And I did pretty damn good. Um, I ran an hour faster than I did last year. So last year wow, I did it in about eight good. hours. This year I did it in about seven. How did that feel? Oh, man, it felt good. Was you exhausted at the end? Or just Hell the yeah. Oh, okay. Your boy was tired. Blessings. And it was a little cold. Cold. I was, I, yeah. The Running thing is, for that long and cold don't even go together. But the thing is, your body temperature drop. Oh, and the true. thing is, I was outrunning most of my friends that I had to wait on their ass. And it was cold than a motherfucker. I said, y'all niggas need to hurry the fuck up. Listen, I'm cold. I'm chilly. I'm a little, got a chill in A little chilly. Um, so, you know, did that. I had a great time. Took pictures. Um, I went to Marathon Marathon. Is it Metal Monday? Get, uh, What's Metal Monday? You can go there and they usually have like a newspaper with your name uh, printed in there. Um, I got that, but I lost it on the trip. I was going to say, I ain't seen that. Um, so that was fun. And then um, that next day, I checked into a, a five-star hotel. <laughs> I can't stand that. Checked into a five-star hotel so I can take my uh, business class trip yeah. to Portugal. Yeah. Portugal was fun. Portugal. I, I think that was like my favorite part of uh, everything I had going on. Yeah. So I had like this video photo shoot in Portugal and the shit was amazing. I flew business class. So I was drinking up all the drinks, eating up all the food, having dessert and shit, copious amounts of wine. 
I mean, get over there to put copious amounts of wine. Well, you know, wine is cheap over there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then get over there, and niggas just having all types of seafood and shit. I had this big ass tiger. Port City, right? Yeah. Port, not port. Port. Yeah, port. Okay. So I had like this big ass tiger prawn risotto. That shit was good. Mm -hmm. Man, I said all types of food. I had these little uh, custard plies. The little custard pies I brought back, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, mini yeah, custard yeah. pies, mm-hmm. that was cool. I think that was interesting is that everywhere I went at night, somebody asked me if I wanted Coke. Like Coke, like yeah, like, white, like the snow, like that white girl. Yes, that white girl. <laughs> and it was interesting because it always happened you know what like I mean? this. Coke Cola, like no, <laughs> it always like happened like girl. this. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. You got a cigarette? You got a cigarette? And I'm like, huh, what? You know, I get in my headphones, even though they ain't playing, but I'm acting like I got something planned. So, you know, they, excuse me, excuse me. And I'll take it out. Like, what you want? Yeah. You got a cigarette? I'm like, no, I don't smoke. And then, you want some Coke? I said, what the fuck? Don't get the fuck on. Coke is not cheap. No. <laughs> and every time it was like that, they tried to get you with the with the get got. Yeah. Can I have a cigarette? You have do a cigarette? Do a lot of Coke over there? I don't know. I ain't seen nobody do no nose candy in front of me. Yeah, well, you know, that's very American. Like, that's very rock star. Like, we just sniffing Coke in front of right. people. Right. I hope people have a little bit more discretion. I ain't seen nobody sniffing a little low nose candy. But it was like that. Can I have a cigarette? No, I ain't got no cigarettes. I don't smoke. You want some white girl? You want some Coke? No. Oh, that couldn't have been Nyambi. <laughs> Excuse me? I rebuke. I rebuke. <laughs> I rebuke you. <laughs> Um, you know, other than that, I really can't talk about much about what I was doing there other than I had like a video and a photo shoot there. Um, and I met some interesting people. Uh, one of the persons that I met, uh, who was a model also runs like this, um, pub crawl Mm -hmm. type thing. Yeah. So I did that one night. That was fun. Yeah. It was interesting. Mm -hmm. She was good as hell in beer, beer pong. Um, First of all, I am way too young to play beer pong. Her ass is tearing it up. I think I've only played beer pong twice in my life with some white roommates from college. And mm-hmm. I was like, this feels very... Y'all wonder why y'all always got mono and strep. And then uh, she was on The Voice. She was on The Voice oh, Portugal. shut up. So I seen her. I said, oh, hey, go, go ahead, girl. Start singing. So she did that Can she blow shit. or she can blow? Yeah, she can blow. Okay, uh, other than that, you know, as far as tourist stuff, I just got on one of those hop on, hop off buses. That's like my jam. Whenever I'm in a new place... Yeah, Hey, I'll take it. I know. Whenever I'm in a new place, I take my ass to a hop on, hop off bus and take one loop around it so I can know, figure out where the hell I'm at and what cities and what uh, part of the city I'm at. Hey, I'm just, that's a good way to get a temperature check, Loki. Mm-hmm. You know, no, nigga, I'm trying to figure out what the fuck I'm at. You, it, it, oh. <laughs> I know you did it. Mm-hmm. Oh, Nero, can you pause? What? Before you go on, because you're going to talk about your next stop. Mm hmm. Y'all, I did watch something that disturbed me. I think this is the weekend of psychological thriller, th- thrillers. Why didn't you Negroes tell me that I should have watched the short film, There's Something About the Johnsons? Mm. I watched it, but I watched the reaction while Zoe did it. Nero, was this the craziest movie you ever seen? I didn't even see it at all, but it was fucking interesting. There's what something the about the Johnsons. Just go on YouTube and look at Zoe's reaction. We'll talk Wednesday. Go ahead. Now, yeah, we always watching some crazy ass shit. Well, Excuse me. <laughs> Nia. <laughs> Nia can back me up. The first three seconds, I knew it was going to be some good shit. I said, oh, honey. Go ahead. So, you know, I had this photo on video shoot, and, you know, near him killing it, doing his thug thizzle, um, doing everything I do. And then there was like, near him. I said, what's up? Would you like to go to Athens? I said, Georgia? Like, oh no, God. nigga. Ain't never Greece. Been nowhere before in your My life. My poor black ass. You said Athens. What's Athens. down in Athens? What's I got in a Athens? couple friends. Yeah, I got a couple friends I heard in Atlanta. It's beautiful in Athens. <laughs> Nigga, no. It is beautiful in Athens. Greece. Oh, well, yes. I would like to go there, too. I would. I've been thinking about it. <laughs> it's on the to-do list. So, you know, Naomi and maybe have been going at it for the past week. And I'm like, oh, baby, I got some bad news. What's going on? They want me to go to Greece. He goes, Naomi. Congratulations! What? No, I did not. Yes, you did. What are you talking about? You didn't. Even, we didn't even really talk because it's time difference or something. Congratulations! Oh, whatever. I, ain't I said, ooh, I don't know if I'm gonna have a place to stay when I come back home. Me and Mabel was thugging it out. <laughs> yeah, I said the same thing. My mother, I ain't know if I have a job when I come back home. 
bitch. My boss, just let me know when you're coming. And I was like, all right. <laughs> Next thing you know, I ain't been back since I Never would have made it. But you know what? It's worth it. Because your ass, hey, look, you're just going to get opportunities like this. So no. just come to your doorstep and be like, hey, you want to go to Portugal? You did so good here. You want to go to Greece? Yeah. Fuck yeah. I mean, that also goes to being obedient. You have to. This is when you have to step out on faith and, faith and really have a good converse, conversation and connection with you and your God, too. Right? Because the Lord will whisper for he yells. If he don't want you to be somewhere, hopefully a lot of times he'll whisper, try to get you other places, mm-hmm. get you to see other things, but you keep denying and see what happens. Well, if this was a whisper, I hate to see what that fucking yell was. Can we talk about <laughs> Christmas praises? <laughs> if this Shout out to y'all. Whisper. What episode I was talking about? A Christmas praise? I think it was around Christmas. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> y'all know what a Christmas praise is. You know, on Christmas Day, you get your stuff under the tree. Mm-hmm. You go, oh, thank you, Mama. Thank you, Daddy. I appreciate it. I know I put this on the list of air quotes saying I appreciate you. Then at the end of the day, you eat your little cinnamon rolls. And then Mama be like, go outside. And you be like, what's out there? And you go out there and there's something out there with a big old red bow. And it's major. And you just start shouting. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. That is what a Christmas praise is. And that's what the Lord continuously does. Because a lot of times, y'all, what we do, we praising the Lord for what's already under the tree. The stuff we already done put on the list. The stuff we already been promised. And a lot of times, we don't even want to go open the door and see what's outside. You know what you're thinking outside, Nero? What? It's bigger. Mm. Y'all, y'all want me to shout? Go what ahead. is it, a Sunday? Mm. I should have shouted. I ain't been to church, y'all. <laughs> I ain't been to church in like a month. Ooh. <sighs> well, church is within heart. you. The church, <laughs> church is within me, but I do like to go in the sanctuary. I've been in Silicon Valley too much. I done sent my tithes via text. This too much. So I need to go put my tithes in the, the basket. So there so you got that. some Christmas praises, Nero. Well, that was outside with a bow on it. You weren't expecting that. Shit. Athens was was a outside. Portugal was under the tree. Thank you, Mama. Portugal was under the tree. And then Athens. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. Christmas praises. Shit, now I got flu. I got flued out. Blizz's class. <laughs> you got flued out. All the ways there, First nigga. Nigga, Can let me tell you about, about the joys of business the life class. of business class. Okay. First of all, in America, it's too many goddamn kids in business class. Well, you never mind. I almost said something. I was like, "What the fuck is all these damn kids doing in this damn business class?" I'm over here trying Can to I do had business, a wine? business-like things here. This okay. Oh, oh, I when I was in business class, the kids, I began so toe up. More wine, please. <laughs> hide your kids, hide your husbands. But on the way back, I had business class in London and business class in uh, what was around somewhere other place, probably Portugal. Anything besides economy is good. Oh, and in Greece, I had business class in Greece too. Man, that shit was lit with the food and the wines, nigga. Yeah, did you say the foods and the wine? Yes. At first, I didn't understand people in business class, but. <laughs> I can tell you. But now I understand why I just need a whole account. Yes. That just set aside for when I fly. And d- d- so the I thing upgrade. is, after you done flew it. After you done flew it. It's like you can't even be, can't even do the regular shit no you, more. After you done do business class a couple times, you take your ass back to poverty. I mean, economy. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard. It's worth it. It is. It's worth saving the money to do it. Shit, when niggas just be come over and ask you, they don't you ain't even gotta ask for shit. Especially if you plan it. Like of course last minute trips. But if it's like say you do like a yearly trip or something, y'all should really, if you can afford it, try to like save a little extra coin, at least get an upgrade. If you can't do business, at least do the economy plug. Do a little mm-hmm. something extra. Cause it does make it a little easier. So that shit was off the hook. I've been. I ain't never got so fierce about my points. I done turned Man. to the colonizer. I'm, I'm platinum. What did you go? Speaking of that, I, I want to be upgraded. I'm platinum. I need to figure out how I can add these two past two trips to my what's name. Oh, you better. Shit. Now, now, one thing when I thought of my company, that's the first thing I asked. Can I have these points? <laughs> Is these off limits? Look, I'm going to HR. Is this off limits? Give me my goddamn points. Give me all these points. I need to figure out what Star Alliance count. I need to add this too. That, that's United Airlines. Oh, mm. Why no? <laughs> United is. Mm. All right. What else is happening? So I went to Greece um, and, and did somewhat the same thing. Another video photo shoot. It's amazing, y'all. I wish I can tell you, but I can't. Eventually. Eventually I can. But um, it was dope. I had some amazing good times there. Uh, I went to go see Acropolis. 
out what? there. Acropolis. That's what it's called. It's called Acropolis. Yeah, Acropolis. That's so that's like thought. the that's like the lost city of. Uh, I know what Rome. it is. I just didn't know that's what it's called. Yeah, it's called Acropolis. Huh. So you know, I didn't get to go all the way up in there like I wanted to, but I I, I seen some things, uh-huh. and it was actually restoring it. So that, I think that's pretty dope that oh, all the tours yeah. and stuff that they're doing is taking it to re- restore it. Uh-huh. Uh, the food in Greece was amazing. Um, let me see. I like when it was all said and done. Though I like Portugal better. Why? Um, I just felt safer in Portugal. And what I mean by that is that um, Portugal also had black people there, like black folk, black folk. And it's Mm. interesting to see like black folk, like see black women and like dressed in um, like what the kids be dressing in now, like 90s attire. Yeah. I want to say box break, but cornrows and a doobie wrap. And then next thing you know, you walking by and they speaking uh, fucking Portuguese. I love that. Like, what the hell? hell. I love Throw that. you off. That's one of my biggest regrets. I guess it's not a regret. I'm still young. Mm-hmm. I guess I can pair it with Nia. But really not truly learning the language. Like, mm-hmm. could I do enough Spanish to go to the bathroom, get to the U.S. Embassy mm-hmm. and order some food? Yeah. But, like, I'm not fluent enough to have a conversation in. Like, that makes me, yeah, I think that might be on my list. Like, I need to be more fluid. I need to be fluent in a language. Mm-hmm. Like it feels very make America great that I only can speak English, especially the older I get. And like the more people I talk about, like not talk about that I have conversations with and people I'm around, even before out here, right? Like I've always come from a circle of folks who've been places and seen things. And that is one regret I have. And I think when we have children, when and if we have children, that's something I'm going to push. A second language is important. Yeah. Just to stop centerizing or like, I don't know. The American experience is just so, it's so raggedy that when we go different places, people, I don't know, that we can't even jump in and speak other people's languages. Yeah. I don't know. It just feels very make America great again. And the older I get, at the least I like I like it less and less. It is. Um, so I just felt a lot safer in, in Portugal because of the amount of black folk that was that was there. They're a lot nicer there uh, compared to Greece where it's nothing but white folk. Were there black people in Greece? Mm, I mean, actually, there's black the, people everywhere. But. Other than the black people that was flewed in like me to do very this few. shoot. But so very, very few. Mm. How was the the black people that you were with? What? How do I say this? Yeah, give me grace. How do I say this? Where were they from? Were they like from Portugal or like were they transplants? Were they sojourning? So, like what, what? What was type of niggas we talking about? So in Portugal, like the niggas I dealt with were Portuguese born and bred. Okay. So that that was interesting. Um, but they always knew their roots to Africa, like wherever they, wherever their family was from. Oh, so what was the migration from black people to come to Portugal without slavery? Mm. I'm getting too deep. Yeah. Okay. I'm. Sorry. <laughs> That's why you ain't invite me on this trip. Because I would have just said I would have been like, so. Like, what was that migration? How you? I mean, it's like Ellis Island. Like, you just came here and searching of like to open up a bake shop. Like, what mm. the fuck? Like, whenever I see brown skin in white spaces, Spaniards or anything like that, I always go at the slavery and trade. Mm. I'll read up on Portugal. I'm sure it's there too. Yeah. But the other folks you connected with, right? Because now you're in Europe and different places. There are people who are not as connected to the slave experience. Yeah, the slave dysphoria, the slave trade. So when I was in... As we would be. So when I was in Greece, um, I there were uh, a couple of black people that was on my crew. So you had somebody who were from, uh, who grew up in London. Okay. You had two black folks who grew up in different parts of uh, Paris. Yeah. You had someone that grew up in the Netherlands. Ooh. And you had somebody that uh, was originally from San Francisco and lived in the Le- and who lived in the Netherlands now. Lived in who? Live in the Netherlands now. Oh, okay. So it was just an interesting thing because, like, we were the blacks, and you know, just like blacks anywhere, the you blacks gonna sit to together. together. <laughs> no matter what was going on, the blacks gonna sit together. So I think it was just interesting having conversations with them, yeah, uh, just to figure out like their life, right? Because it's like. I got blacks from like different parts of like European company countries yeah. who've like been there their whole life, and they can trace back to yeah. Africa or and, wherever they are yeah. without the bondage or the apartheid. Right. right, that's a whole different live black ass experience. So, and I think <laughs> so, and like even having conversations with them, like I had like this emotional roller coaster of like sadness uh-huh. and like, well, you know, I'm just black, right? Because yeah. like just having this thing is like. 
when we were sitting down having dinner, I'll just ask some questions like, how was life growing up being black in the Netherlands or yeah. being black in London or being black in, in France, right? Yeah. And they, they was like, well, you know, we lived, or then, and most of the sense it's like, well, you know, we lived in like the suburbs or we lived in the yeah. city. Uh, we had our like bubble of family and friends. Um, but I really, really experienced racism, racism, or what like what y'all experience in the U.S. Damn. And I just lived life like I didn't have to worry about nothing. There wasn't much violence. You get the hell out. And I just like lived life. Wow. And I was like, how beautiful. Like yeah, like how. How beautiful is that? Like it almost made you want to cry. It it was like <laughs> it made me almost want to cry. Like oh, this is why Bald went went over here. <laughs> it was, and it was it was so. I want to say taking the back, but it was so shocking to yeah. like hear them share their experiences, and then you know I'm the nigga of all niggas, right? We the nigga niggas. Like I know we we actually we need to just do what we can all say niggas no more. But like I know, and the thing is, this folks got it worse than us too. Like, yeah. Oh my goodness. But to like have them be like, well, you know, I lived a very decent life. Like we had our little pocket, we stayed there, but I really didn't feel like I just lived my best life. Whatever I wanted to do, I can do. No Jim Crow, huh? I didn't have to yeah. think about nothing, think twice. I just did it. And it's like, you know, even like when you even talk about like black France or like black Paris people, like we just Paris people. And it's Parisian. like, well, you know. Oh, they, they're nationality yeah. first, then race. So yeah. they're Parisian, yeah. then they black. They're not yeah. Afro-Parisian. No. How That's how we would say it in America. And it's like, you know, it's, how, it's just interesting in America how y'all just put Y'all skin color first, like how even how you talk like black American, right? And I was like, mm. so this Jeez. it was just an interesting. They did. Oh, good, I didn't come. No, but it was just like an interesting conversation, right? Wow. Um, and just like the whole, um, the whole thing of like even though these folks are blacks, they can be tied. They have their exact ties of where they came from. Yes, like where in Africa. And, like, when it was talking, like, the biggest difference between, like, uh, I'm, I'm being black in America and being black in whatever city there was at, I can be like, you're from Kenya, right? Your parents are from Kenya. Your parents are from where? Cameroon. Yeah. All right. Your parents are from where? Nigeria. Yeah. Your parents are from where? Ghana. My parents is from Alabama. Oh! The outrospection of it all. Y'all know what outrospection is? Thinking about how the people, like, perceive you and navigating through mm. that. And we wonder why. You know, I don't want to pro- proclaim, like, the xenophobia, like, mm. amongst black people or whatever. Um, because I don't think it's, I don't think it should be a thing and it's not. But it is something to our lived experience. And we do need to have spaces where we have conversations to say our lived experience are, yeah. are different. And I do believe some of our elders, you know, some of the elders do say shit about other things. I, I absolutely have, like, African friends who be like, yeah, my elders are like, don't be fucking with them African Americans when they got too much baggage. Mm-hmm. They be talking about slavery and the white men too much. Like, it, it, but it's true. Sure. Oh. And I don't know, like, and, and that's something I'm going to talk to my therapist about because it kind of made me sad, right? I'm sad, nigga. I've been thinking about racism since I've been six months. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, I'm never going to stop. It's every single day. Every I don't know if an hour goes by and I do not think about systematic oppression or racism or how I show up in the world. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's literally an hour that goes by when I'm out in public mm-hmm. that I cannot think about it. And I think that's what made me sad is like being black and like being a black in America, like it's definitely something that you just can't take away, right? Yeah. Because we, like our culture, like the shit that we went through, like drives everything else. But it, even it, to the point where I don't know, I think I did, and I think I overheard your sister saying it. When Niren was going to these other places, my I, I didn't first be like, oh my goodness, you're going to Grace see Macropolis. What's it called? Acropolis. The, 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 the old buildings. I didn't say that. I said, are you safe there? Mm-hmm. Who are you going out with? I, that's what I immediately went to. As a black man walking in these spaces, do you need to be alone walking in those spaces? Mm-hmm. Because usually, me even as a black woman, although people see me as a threat, when you see a black man and a black woman, it helped bring that down a little bit. I had that same example where I had a colleague come up um, up in town this week, and we all went out to dinner together. Our boss is white. She left, and it was just him. And I was about to leave. He was waiting Uber. He was like, no, nah, don't worry. I'll leave without you. I was like, I'm not leaving you alone out here in this white-ass neighborhood as a big black man. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stand here so they think we're, we're a unit. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, even that type of shit. Yeah. And I live out here. Oh my goodness! Go ahead, Jesus. 
so like and I think that was one of the things the fact that they grew up so carefree. Yeah. Where we grew up it, careful. It, it, careful. Oh. <laughs> right. Like some folks, you know, some folks from apartheid Africa that right, have right, right. Similar, th- and I think we have more. We should have more of a connection to those crew of folks, right? Than we do. I feel like there's a disconnect to the folks because there's a lot of folks who moved over here who were a part of that, and I don't think that conversation is had because I think those traumas and PTSDs are very similar. Right. But you're not talking about that. You're talking no. about the other folks. Yeah, I'm talking about these folks. Like these folks lived so carefree as being quote unquote black in their res- respective like cities. Mm-hmm. In their communities, and they didn't have to think about all the other things that that was brought on because of slavery. I kept asking you, do you think they were? It had to be happening. They think they just weren't aware, or it just wasn't as egregious. And the thing is, like most of them's like, well, all, it, either the five people that was there, two of them was already mixed. So, gotcha, so, so they're like half they're black. Up, they're showing up different. So they're like lighter skin. Yeah. So okay. black and Dutch, right? Oh, okay. And you had one that was like black, like their mama was black or like from Cameroon, and their uh-huh. dad was from like France, right? Gotcha. So they pulling on the fathers so, and mothers' privileges. Right, right, gotcha. right. But mm-hmm. you know, they had things of like, well, I when I got older and I wanted my natural hair, I didn't know what to do with it, gotcha. things of that sort. Uh-huh. But like. You know, they, they had their own struggles when it came to that, but it was nothing as egregious as, this shit that's like, on. you had to go through growing up in the city of Detroit. And I and, I, and, and there was just something that was, was like, damn, thing. right? That like, was, like, a, a it, sadness that... It was, like, happy to connect with them and just to be around yeah. black people and be around black people with different lived experiences and different cultures, right? Like, I think that's always so fulfilling. But it is. It's something when you step away from that and you get real quiet, you be like fuck mm-hmm. what what is life when you always on high alert yes. your nervous system is always on a thousand yes mm-hmm. because like after everybody shared their story because you know i'm thinking like well let me hear their stories mm-hmm. and say like, oh you know it was nothing really you know i, I lived the easy life like you know and you know did you make the space so they can open it up yeah i like you sure no colonizers tried you yeah <laughs> <laughs> or uh, yeah yeah uh-huh and then it's like, well, you know, what about you? And it's like, well, I grew up in Detroit. What chapter would you like to read in the book? <laughs> the grown up chapter? Right. The teenage? The baby? The white woman? Oh, I still remember in second, third grade. You'll be so good, Nayambi, but you just have such a big head. <laughs> just talk so much. Why mm-hmm. would you tell somebody that? Oh, white woman. So, see if she don't face so I, I think that was the. When it was all said and done, like that's those are the things that mm-hmm. um I learned from it. Like in addition to like the photo shoot yeah, and the video shoot I did. But like that was like one of the biggest takeaways that I, I learned from is that black folks in different parts of the country, um, even though you think that they're struggling, these motherfuckers are living a carefree it's, life. It's a different lived experience. Especially it's for different. our age range. Yeah. Right? I would imagine their parents probably have a different lived Exactly. Experience. But I would say our age range and younger. Mm-hmm. It, that's where the discrepancies start really popping up. Right. And like some of them's like, yeah, you know, uh, my family is like fourth generation or fifth generation Yeah, friends. that's different. Yeah, that's different. So like we always been over here. Like I've, yeah. like, yeah, that's my different. mom is from, Ni- you know, family is from like Nigeria, but we've been over here for right. four or five they're generations. Parisians. Yeah, they're Parisians. You know yeah, it's something to that. And this is a shift happening with the generations. Mm-hmm. It's a shift happening. Hmm. It just makes me think for our kids, right? Yeah. But I don't think our kids are going to have the privilege of not understanding or being a part of systematic oppression. Mm-mm. Um, it, it doesn't matter how much money we make. They're still not going to be shut from that. Because we black in America. Yeah. And I think that's the key. Yeah, we, we haven't reached a point where it's like, oh, no, they ain't going to have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. Ooh, we, landed, we ended heavy on that. We did. Ooh. But we had a good time, right? We did. All right, y'all. So this is the plan for the rest of the week. Wednesday, we got a black love story we're going to do. We're going to catch up on all the shout out Friday stuff on Wednesday. And then we'll do a couple hot topics. Friday through the following week, we'll be out. But I think, what is that? That November 28th is when that Monday, whatever it is, that's when we'll be back. And we'll be rocking with y'all from then all the way into the new year.
Sounds mm-hmm. good. Yeah. All right, close zone out, Neil. As always, to submit your Black Love story, go to blacklovematters.com. To submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk, shoot us an email at blacklovematters at gmail.com. And to leave a comment about anything we talked about, head on over to that website. Uh, we got that sound clock. We ain't got that voicemail. That's at 508-784-1111. That's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is, is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.